Okay, so here's a fixed point example. Credit card charges 18% annual interest. This is pretty much the norm. 18%, 20%, I don't know, you might even get more than that. Some of the lower ones might be 12%. I don't know what the lowest is, but I'm going to guess it's around 12. You owe $2,000 on the credit card, and you're going to pay, that got cut off, you're going to pay the minimum $50 per month. So we want to write a recurrence relationship for this. So what that means now is that my now is equal to my previous. So what's going to happen is that they're going to get pay, uh, I'm sorry, they're going to charge me 18% interest on the amount I owe. And then I'm going to pay off $50 of it. Now in the first month, sometimes they don't charge you the interest right away and but then they'll get you sooner or later. But this will be, and so this, these numbers don't always match up exactly what happens with the credit card, just based on do they charge you interest right away and different things like that, but it gives you a really solid idea of what's going on. So I take now is equal to the previous, and I'm going to multiply by the rate. The rate is going to be 1 plus, and this is just from your exponential growth problems that you did with um, exponential functions and I'm going to divide by how many times they're going to apply this rate and it's going to be 12 times. They're not charging me 18% per year, they're charging me 18%, I'm sorry, they are charging me 18% per year and so this will figure out what the interest rate they're going to apply each month for me. And then to finish this off, I'm going to be making a payment. So from my $2,000 that I owe, I'm going to take away $50. So even though I'm paying in, yeah, I'm taking it away from the $2,000 that I owe. This is a negative number, so I'm actually, uh, I don't know how to say it exactly, but I'm adding this number into this negative number. And so I've got it kind of turned around a little bit. But this will work. And then I also need my first term, so A sub 1 is equal to... 2000. Now take out your calculator and have your TI Inspire ready for this. And you can do this on other calculators too. I have another video that does this with the 84, but I want to do it now with the Inspire. If you get a calculator screen up, you can put this recursive formula in. So I got I owe $2000. They're going to charge me interest. This is going to bring the $2000 back, and then this part is the add-on that the bank puts in. And then I'm going to subtract off $50, which is my payment. So after one month, I'm going to owe $1,980. Now what I can do with this too is that I can take the answer and I can multiply by the same thing. 1 plus 0.18 divided by 12. And then I'm going to subtract 50. And if I do this... and keep on hitting enter. That's all I'm doing is hitting enter. If I use the ANS button at the original here, this can take down my balance and I can see what I owe after a certain amount of period of time. So this might be the first month, second month, third month, fourth month, and so on. Now there's a more elegant way to do this with the calculator too, and you can do it with the graphing menu. So I'm going to get a new page here, and I want to add graphs. And so when I add the graphs here, I go to the menu, and I'm going to change my input version for this graph. So I go to graph entry, and I'm going to go down here to where it says sequence, and I'm going to go back to sequence here. Now what this notation means is that this is like A sub N. The calculator doesn't do the subscript, and maybe that's the old calculator, and they just put it into this new one too. So this just means the subscript, this is the locker number right here. And this is my function. Instead of using A, they're using U1. And so what happens now is that if I want to put this in, the same in, uh, credit card problem, is that I'm going to go UN1, uh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, U1 of, and then I want the previous. So the subscript would be N minus 1. I put it in there, and then I'm going to multiply by same thing, 1 plus 0.18, and I'm going to divide by 12, and then I want to subtract 50. So that's the same exact formula that I was working with before, except for this was the answer. 
So the answer is like the previous. And then my initial term would be 200, I'm sorry, 2,000. And step one is what we want. I mean, we're just doing it each month. So if I click on this, Oh, I don't see anything, but I can go to fix my window. Remember, we had $2,000, and we want to see how long this will take to pay off. I don't know if that's your objective with credit cards, but it is my objective with credit cards. And so this is going to take me a lot of months, maybe 100 months. No, that's way too many, way, way, way too many. $50, I should be able to pay off that $2,000 TV pretty quick. And so this one, I got to go up to 2000 and maybe pad it a little bit, 20 and if I grab, oh, there it is. Oh, wow, that takes a long time to pay that off. So what's happening here is that each one of these payments, these are months as we go along here on the X, on the Ys, that's how much I'm gonna be owing. So I start off with 2,000 and it will progressively decline here. However, wow, this takes a long time for me to cash out. Wow. Okay, so this is the recursive formula that we put in. And then here's how the payments go. Now we want to know what that value is. We can do this a couple ways. We can go to menu and go to table and then do my split screen table. And with this, these values are already in here. I want to look for when my, oh, when my balance is zero. And I find it right in there. So between the 62nd and the 63rd month. Uh-oh, that's like five years. I buy a TV and it takes me five years to pay it off because I'm paying the monthly on my credit card, the minimum monthly on my credit card. That is ridiculous. So we want to be able to pay a little bit more off as we can. So to answer the specific questions here, are, this is the second value through the sixth value of what I owe off my credit card. And then also here's where the payoff occurs between the 62nd and the 63rd month to answer this question here. Yeah, I try not to ever carry a balance on my credit card. It's always a bad idea. But having a credit card is all right from what we have. Now the fixed point for this one is if I let, if I go to my equation that I have over here, I'm going to do it over here. If I let my now equal to my previous, and I try to solve this out. When I solve this out, I'm going to find a decimal for this, and I'm going to subtract this x from this x over here, and then try to solve it. So I'm going to get all my x's on one side. So that's, that's the value I get there. I'm going to get all my x's on one side. So this is 1x minus this times x. And so I'm going to be left with negative 0 0.015x is equal to negative 50. So my fixed point would be the result of this. And this turns out to be my fixed point here, $3,333.33. What does that mean? Well, if it's a credit card, and I think if I have that balance, I think I'm going to owe that perpetually for the rest of my life if I'm just paying off the $50. Oh my. $3,300, pay the minimum. I'm going to be paying this off for the rest of my life and never make it, never dent it. That's not a good thing. So you got to be careful with credit cards when you have them. Now, the in the um, rest of this worksheet, we'll probably have to do this in class because this is getting really long and I apologize. But this is an annuity where you save money. So instead of subtracting $50, you're going to add in $200. And the interest rate's a little bit different. You might want to try that and see how that goes. Otherwise, we'll do that in class. All right, thanks a lot. And I hope you enjoyed this. And we'll get into some nice applications later. Thank you.